Good morning, boys and girls. It was very nice to see some of the videos and emails I got yesterday. I love hearing from you. I hope you're enjoying my videos even if I'm not getting videos from you. I hope so. Okay, let's get started right today. Let's pray. Fold your hands, bow, close your eyes and bow your heads. Dear God, you are good. You are good all the time. We are amazed by you and by how much you love. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us good things. We know that every good thing comes from you, Lord God. And you do not change. Mm. Thanks for this day, Lord. Um, I thank you that it's going to be warm, even though it's rainy. And um, I just pray that we would have a good day ahead and have a good time with our families. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I have lots of thoughts going in my head. Let's just keep going through our schedule. We start with prayer, and then we practice our Bible verses. A friend loves at all times. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. Proverbs 17, 17. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created God created the heavens and the earth, the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, 1, Genesis 1, 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Psalm 118, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, his love endures forever. Psalm 118, verse 1. For a child will be born to us, Isaiah 9, verse 6. For a child will be born to us, Isaiah 9, verse 6. We love that's not what comes next, is it? Oh boy, I'm just a little bit off this morning. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, a child is born to us, and we know that we learned that verse at Christmas time, and we know that the child was Jesus, and he did not stay a child. Some kids come into my class talking a lot about baby Jesus, and while it's wonderful that Jesus came as a baby, it's also wonderful that he grew up into a man and did all kinds of wonderful things as a grown-up man. So let's sing about that. Jesus grew, 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 Jesus grew, 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 in body and in wisdom. Jesus grew, 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 Jesus grew, 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 in body and in wisdom. Luke 2, 52. We love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. We love, we love, we love, because he first loved us. First John 4, 19. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. John 3, 16. Trust in God, trust also in Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 1. Trust in God, trust also in Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 1. Okay, that was our verse for this month. We get a new month tomorrow. So this is the very last day before we get a new verse and a new month. So let's look at our calendar. Here it is. This one was yesterday. This is where tomorrow, today goes. Let's see what color it should be. Pink, pink, green, green. Pink, pink, green, green. Pink, pink, green, green. Pink, pink, green, green. Well, we just had two greens, 
And it looks like after you get two greens, you always go on to a pink. So two greens and then a pink. Uh-oh. Somebody get me scissors fast, fast. Here's my pink paper. And uh, here's the blue marker I've been using for calendar. Thank you, darling assistant. And let me cut a rectangle about like that. And I write, hmm. They've all been starting with two. And then it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. If they've all been starting with two, and I went from zero through nine, I need to move up. I'm going to write a three. And a zero. And it looks like this. Three and zero. Hmm. So first we had one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight, nine. And that's just one little number. And then all the numbers start with one. And then all the numbers start with two. And so now we've got numbers that start with three. Here's my glue stick. And I'm putting it on right next to yesterday. Here's the one I just did that starts with a three. Three and then zero. This one means today. Let's look straight up. Ooh, it starts with TH. TH is th, th, th. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So today, th, th, th. Thursday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay? And here's our month. Starts with an A. January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. So today is Thursday, April, and it's time to count the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 30. When it starts with a 3, it's a 30. And we don't have to say 30, 0. It's just 30. And if we had another day, it would be 31. But we don't have another day in this month. There are 30 days in April, and tomorrow will be a new month. Today is Thursday, April 30th, 2020. You say it with me. Today is Thursday, April 30th, 2020. Okay, thanks. Okay, April is in the spring. Spring is when it gets warmer. We get lots of new plants and they need lots of water, so we also get lots of rain. Today is supposed to have lots of rain. Uh, tomorrow's also supposed to have lots of rain. I'm sending you uh, Mrs. Stegen's lesson for Discovery Garden. And whenever you get a chance today or tomorrow or Saturday, you can do her lesson. And I think it's a lesson that'll be best with no rain. So try to go out in between rain. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. And if not, Saturday is supposed to be gorgeous. So maybe you and your family can do your Discovery Garden lesson together. Okay. Um, we did prayer, Bible verses. I hope you're doing jobs. We did calendar, season, weather. And so now it's time to move on. Um, let's look at these guys. 
So, like I said, when they first arrived, I wasn't sure if they were all alive. Didn't know if they had made it through the night outside on my porch. And they're definitely all five alive. I sometimes see them moving, but I usually have to watch them for a while. I wonder if any of them, oh good, this guy over here is moving right now. And how can you best see him? You see him wiggling around up there? He's up toward the top. There's one down here who seems to be the one who moves around the most. But this one is the one who's moving most right now. He just moved all the way onto the lid under there. Well, this is an interesting view for you, isn't it? You can see this guy well, but you can also see the one over on this side who's up near the top. I'm finding that this is one of the hardest, oh good, this guy's moving now too. This is one of the hardest things for me to teach on video instead of in person because I can't hear what you're saying about what you're looking at. Usually kids are making so many guesses and some kids are saying they're worms or wormy things. Some kids are saying they're centipedes. Some kids are saying they're caterpillars. I think you could see them better maybe with a white background with me and the painting behind them. You can't see them quite as well, so we'll put that there. I wonder if you know what they are. I think I told you they're bugs. You did a discovery lesson about worms already. So maybe you know they're not worms. There are different kinds of worms. But earthworms have those soft, smooth, moist bodies. And you can see that these have a lot more texture than an earthworm. Hmm. If you thought centipede or caterpillar, those are both very, very good guesses. Because caterpillars and centipedes are both the same um, phase of life. I'm going to tell you something about insects. Are you ready? They come from eggs. Not the same kind of eggs we eat. We usually eat chicken eggs. Some people might eat, I don't know, duck eggs or goose eggs or something. But um, we don't eat bug eggs. You, eggs are all different and they all hatch the same kind of creature as the mama who laid the egg. And so grown-ups of this kind of animal, the mommy lays the eggs and when they hatch, insects often look like this with lots and lots of legs and a long skinny body. So they're baby insects and they grow a lot. Can you tell from the video that they're nearly twice as big as they were yesterday? They grow a lot when they're babies like this. And then they will change and they will look completely different when they're grown up. Centipedes are the same. Baby insects that are going through this phase are called larvae. And that includes centipedes and caterpillars. And I would like to have you watch them for a few more days to see what you can learn about them and what you think they are. I just told you that they're larvae, which means baby insects, which will grow into a different kind of thing altogether. Same kind of animal, but they look completely different when they're babies and when they're grown-ups. Oh, this guy's going along the wall now. Will he keep going now that I turned it? Yeah. The other thing we talk about a lot when I have real kids with me looking at it is what is the brown stuff on the bottom? Is it dirt? Hmm. I have told you they have everything they need in there. So I don't have to open the jar. Oh, he's actually crawling on the webbing that they made. 
It looks like he's going through the air, but he's crawling on webbing. Oh, it's so cool. Um, they have everything they need in there. So is the brown stuff just dirt? What would they need to meet their needs? I think it has to be some kind of food, right? A mixture of food and water for them. So they have everything they need inside the jar. Okay, that's probably enough talking about these little guys today. And I want to read you a book. Here's my drawing from yesterday. I thought I might draw another drawing of them today, but since you can't see that they're much bigger very well, I don't think I'll draw another picture yet. We'll see if they change even more, and then I'll draw a different picture. This is a book that most of you probably have at home. Have you seen this book before? It's called The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. I have three copies of this book. Let me show them to you. This is the regular one. This one is a coloring book. So you, they show you on the cover a picture that's partly co colored, partially. But look inside. The pictures aren't colored at all yet. And what I did many, many years ago, before you were born and I was teaching first grade, was I copied this book so that I could keep it always clean as a coloring book. And I colored this one. So I think this is the one I will read to you today just for fun. Since you have the regular one at home, a lot of you. It says, My, My Own Very Hungry Caterpillar Coloring Book by Eric Carl and Mrs. Awad. Actually, I wrote Diana. You write your name on the line. My Own Very Hungry Caterpillar Coloring Book by Eric Carl and Diana Awad. And Eric Carl dedicated this book to his sister. It says, for my sister, Krista. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. You may have noticed I don't have to look at the words on every page in this book. One Sunday morning, the sun came up and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. So this book's about a caterpillar. What we have might be caterpillars, might be something very much like caterpillars. He started to look for some food. As soon as he hatched, he was very hungry. That's true of ours. That's why they have that brown stuff at the bottom, right? On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. Oh, I never put the holes through my pages. On the original, there's a hole right through the page where the caterpillar must have eaten through. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears. One, two but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums. Ah, it's not as stiff as the original book. One, two, three. But he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through four, one, two, three, four oranges, but he was still hungry. Did I count? Can you see? I stapled some of the words. I got it wrong. Oh no, it was four strawberries, but how many oranges? Oh no. Let's count them again. One, two, three, four, five. 
On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. Okay, let's see what happens on Saturday, shall we? Oh, look at all that. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. Can you see his little face? I will show you his little face. <laughs> he had a stomach ache. You can tell he does not feel so good. There he is. On Sunday, he ate through one nice green leaf and he felt much better. Now, he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more then two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. And my back page is the About the Author page. This is a picture of Eric Carl who made the original book. He made up all the words, he made all the pictures, but in the coloring book, they're not colored. And then over here, it has a picture that I drew of myself. And it says all about me. I wonder what it says. <laughs> I wrote it a long, long time ago. Diana was born in Lubbock, Texas on July 12th. She has since lived in New Hampshire, Germany, New York, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. She married Mike Awad on July 5th, 1997. <laughs> It says, I finished this book on May 11th, 2001. I am 27 years old. 2001 was a long, long time ago. I'm older than 27 now. <laughs> this is my book. I want to say one more thing about it. This page. If you have an older version of the book, it says cocoon. It says he built himself a small house called a cocoon. If you have a newer version of the book, it says he built himself a small house called a chrysalis. This book says cocoon because that's the way Eric Carle originally wrote it. But then a bunch of teachers said, you know what, if we want to teach our children proper science about butterflies, it's not really called a cocoon. Some caterpillars build cocoons and they come out and turn into moths. And some caterpillars build chrysalises or chrysalids, and they come out and turn into butterflies. So if it's going to turn into a butterfly, it is a cocoon. I mean, oops, I said it exactly wrong. If it's going to turn into a butterfly, it's a, called a chrysalis. So if you have a new book that says chrysalis, and unlike my book, that's the one that's right. Okay, so we will keep watching our little critters and we will see what they do. Will they build little houses like the one in the book? I'm so glad though, at first, I watched them a lot during the day to say, please move, I wanna know you're still alive. But I am seeing that all of them are growing and every now and then I see all of them move. So I think we still have five living little cre creatures in there and we'll keep learning about them. Okay, I love you. You can start working on your rainbow writing. Let's do a little bit letter J stuff before I go. Here we go. 
I have a basket of markers next to me. I've gotten so used to doing this that whenever I am sitting in this spot with the tripod and the camera, I have a big bucket of markers nearby. Okay, so for Jay, we start in the middle. We go big line down, little curve, and then we can give it a hat. And then the lowercase J starts lower and goes lower. Can you see that? And it has a dot. So I did it in blue. And now I will do it in orange. Big line down, little curve, little hat, little curve, dot. Let's see, here's a purple. Big line down, little curve, and a hat. Big line down, little curve, and a dot. I, like I said, I have a big bucket of markers. I could keep going for a long time with different colors. Big line down, little curve, and a hat. This is not exactly red. It's a very dark red. I would call it maroon. It's pretty. L big line down, little curve, and a dot. So you can do it over and over again until you get lots of practice. Um, Let's see, I didn't mention the kids who sent me videos. Um, Lily did some really cool J work. Lily um, practiced writing a bunch of J's, both uppercase and lowercase, and then she had a big J um, that she colored in, not with markers and not with crayons, but with jelly beans. <laughs> she glued the jelly beans on there, and then she counted how many jelly beans she had of each color, and she pr um, practiced writing. So, now I don't remember exactly the right numbers, but I think she counted about six red, and her mommy wrote the word red, and then she wrote the number six. And she went through and did blue, and yellow, and pink, all the different colors. It was really nice. Um, and I got a really nice um, email from Nolan. Now what am I gonna remember about it? Uh-oh. Nolan, I'm sorry. I'm going blank. I should have written it down like I usually do. I will mention what you did tomorrow because I remember that I really liked it. You were doing cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I know you do cool stuff at home, Nolan. I especially still remember that great unicorn you made. Okay, I will mention more about the emails tomorrow and we will um, do a little more practice. Tomorrow, Friday, is Creative Movement and discover garden usually okay so i will send the creative movement link tomorrow since you can do that inside when it's raining outside i will see you tomorrow or at least i will talk to you tomorrow i love you all talk to you tomorrow hope to see you sometime soon when we're all good and healthy okay bye bye